Ahoy, Peter here from Brighter Training and welcome to our Introduction to Leadership series of videos. Now whether you're new to leadership, aspiring to move into a management role or a seasoned professional, these videos are designed to allow you to self-reflect, check your knowledge and application of key leadership concepts. Now in this, our second video of the series, we're exploring the topic of leadership competencies, what they are, how they contribute to personal and business success. If you haven't already, please remember just to take a moment to hit like and subscribe. It helps us to know that we're on the right track and we are truly grateful to our subscribers for their support and input into our topics. Now, in order to be successful, a person will need to develop and demonstrate relevant skills, knowledge and behaviours. So skills and competencies are often used interchangeably. However, it can help you to explore them as separate elements. So what is a skill? A skill is a learned capacity to carry out a predetermined action. Sounds a little bit jargony, but it's pretty much the ability to do something. Uh, and what is a competency? Well, competencies are a cluster of related abilities, commitments, knowledge, and skills that enable you to act effectively in a job or a situation. Now, competencies really matter because they lead to superior performance and therefore they can be measured. Hence, they're used in performance management, interviews, and coaching. Uh, think of competency-based interviews, and you can check out our video on STAR questions for more information. They give you a much better insight into how someone behaves, and that will really have a much greater influence on their results. Now, what does that mean in practical terms? If you're a manager, the question isn't, what do you do, and what skills and experience do you have? Uh, leadership competencies are about more than that. Imagine you were going to take six months off and you are advertising for the ideal replacement who needs to get not only the numerical results, but they also need to motivate the team, build strong relationships, uh, support a positive culture. You wouldn't just look for someone who has done a particular checklist of activities. You'd look for a cluster of behaviours and experiences, and that's exactly what we mean by leadership competencies. And if you're aiming for a management role, you shouldn't focus on just specific skills. You should be taking the time to be able to demonstrate the overall competencies and the behaviours that will really set you up for success. So what are those competencies? Well, there's three main groups. We've got professional competencies, and those are the ones that allow for success in an organisational context. So they're sort of those accelerators of performance, or of course, if you're lacking them in insufficient strength or quality, they're pretty much the reason why most people fail to excel in their jobs. Uh, they include things like knowledge of the business environment that you're in, industry, professional standards, negotiation skills, and people management. Now, the second group is behavioral or life skills competencies. And life skills are problem-solving behaviors used appropriately and responsibly in the management of personal affairs. So they're a set of skills acquired via teaching or direct experience, and they're used to handle problems and questions commonly encountered in daily life. Examples will include communication, analytical ability, problem solving, initiative, and emotional intelligence. And then finally, we have functional or technical competencies, and these relate to functions, processes, and roles within an organization, and they include the knowledge and the skills required to do a specific activity. For example, the use of a specific software system, uh, systems development, networking and communication, database analysis and design, or finance. So these three groups are then used to assess your suitability and your effectiveness in three key business areas. So you've got job effectiveness, which really just focuses on the results that can be measured. Uh, things like these. Then there's building relationships, uh, which focus on interpersonal relationship skills, again, like these ones here. And finally, we look at organisational success, things like these ones, which look at tactical and strategic measures. So now that we know all of this, how do you practically apply it, or what do hiring managers look for if you're trying to get a management role? Well, we can apply these three groups of competencies to three areas of leadership. First of all, there's leading yourself. So how do you apply these competencies to show integrity and accountability? Next, you've got leading others. How do you show respect for others and motivate and inspire those around you? Finally, there's leading the business. And that's things like having a clear vision, great communication, and a flexible style. 
So if you've got all of that, there are a few things that you can do to practice or self-assess to check and develop your leadership competencies. Firstly, learn how to set a SMART objective, uh, which is an acronym for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timed. Now, SMART goals aren't just used for personal objectives. They can be used to set strategic, cultural, and performance goals. So do you have clear SMART goals for yourself, for your team, your business, and your culture? If not, how do you communicate, motivate, and measure progress? Next, consider creating a feedback culture. So actively seek feedback, learn how to receive it well, and learn how to give feedback properly. Uh, it's not just about corrective feedback, it's catching people doing things well. So use a formal model such as OSCAR uh, to ensure that your feedback is useful and effective. Finally, communicate well and often. So communicate your vision, give updates on progress, set clear expectations and provide a forum to your people so that they can feel safe and supported uh, in, in asking questions. So leadership competencies include being transparent, active listening, communication styles, and not finishing other people's sentences. So work to ensure that you have examples of these. So that is the end of this introductory topic. Remember, professional growth involves honest reflection, disciplined practice, and ongoing review. So look at what you want to achieve, review those core competencies, and reflect or develop examples of how you apply them to help lead yourself, others, and the business, and you'll be taking massive strides towards being a great leader and setting your team up for success. So to share your experiences or questions, leave a comment below or reach out to us directly if you're interested in organising skills training for your team. Our contact information can be found in the description below. Thanks again for tuning in and have a great day.